Now, Mr. Khan, of course, you acted in a few things in the late 80s, but it seems like you really found your place with the creation of the Ben Stiller show in 1989. And you do go on to work with Ben Stiller again throughout the years. So a lot of people want to know, did your involvement on that show stem from a prior relationship with Ben or did it kind of... This, uh, the, re the relationship like during the show did you guys just build from there where is the epicenter of that thing happening from the you beginning know, the genesis a when you say a lot of people want to know is that like the trump a lot of people just me and him no just me, and just me and him okay just me and him. Good. Yeah. Uh, so speaking to you two guys <laughs> who seem to want to know things that nobody else in the world wants to know um i, I ben i met ben in 1986 at john cusack's house that he was renting on outpost in LA while he was shooting say anything I was uh everybody was there uh, somehow we all ended up in John Cusack's rented house on outpost Joan his sister uh DV uh Steve Pink who's the director DV Devin Census who wrote um the OJ Simpson show that he got an Emmy for, uh, Joan Cusack's sister, uh, Lily Taylor was there, um, who, who uh, and, and uh, uh, who else came by? Um, Pam Siegel, Pam Abdon, Winona Ryder came over. It's like, he was like this weird, and then Ben showed up and I didn't know who he was. I We were all kind of, they were in the movie, like Jeremy Piven and stuff were in Say Anything, and I kind of wanted to be in Say Anything, and I was there because I had never been to L.A. before, and John invited me out to hang out, and I was trying to get an agent. Uh, I, had, I had met an agent in Chicago where I was living who told me to come out to L.A. and that he would send me out on commercials. So I got there. I went to the agent's agency. Um, after I made a time with them to meet them. And I got there and I waited for about 40 minutes and I finally said, what's going on? And they said, you know, um, it's a tough time right now and uh, they're not gonna see you. And I said, well, I came all the way out to Los Angeles to meet this guy, <laughs> told me he was gonna send me out. And I met him through my agent. So it wasn't like, it wasn't, it was right at, you know, it was legit to me. Yeah. And uh, they said, well, there's been a writer's strike. I said, well, I'm not, I'm doing a commercials, which is not affected by it. And they said, I'm oh, sorry, this is, this is, you know, we're really sorry. I said, well, I'm not leaving until you see me. There you go. Right. So then they got security and kicked me out. But anyway. <laughs> you made your point. You made your point. Couldn't they have at least sent an email? <laughs> there was no emails in 1986. Okay. Oh, better okay. Time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They sent a smoke signal to me, but I missed it on my way over there. <laughs> ben had did a, did a movie with John. Can't remember what the movie was. Um, he had a small part in it. And so he came out because he was meeting his big time agents, William Morris from New York. And we and John paired us up to, to live in the same room of this very large house. And I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't know who he was. And Ben was like dressed in a Hugo Boss suit. I'm like, dude, you're 22. You know, no, we're all like dressed in shorts and cut off t-shirts. It's the eighties. You know, we're just like in sneakers and this guy's walking around in a suit. I was like, I don't know who he is, but I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like this guy. He's weird. He's got too many suits for his age. And he like says, no offense, but I don't want to share a room with you. I'm like, well, f you, I was here first. So he just, so he, I'm like, oh, fine. Take, take the room, Hugo boss. And uh, I'll go sleep in the, in another room on the couch. I mean, it's free and we're in LA and we're in our twenties. Like, what's the big deal? So we didn't, I didn't like him. And, uh, you know, and he didn't seem to like me very much, but somehow, I don't know. He just, I think he liked the fact that I didn't like him. Like it appealed to him that I didn't know who he was. And I didn't care because I'm like, I'm in my own like world of like, you know, getting thrown out of agencies and not getting in movies. So I'm very, I'm busy. Right. <laughs> I'm super busy. And, and Ben is like, you know, he's in his own thing. And I don't know, I made him laugh. Um, I did Woody Allen impressions for him. He said, I look like a, a cross between Brian Setzer and Woody Allen. And he's made fun of me and how I looked in the 80s, which was laughable. 
And I made fun of him. And I think we sort of bonded on that. And I went back to Chicago triumphantly, of course, without an agent or mm. getting in a movie and um, resumed my life there. I was living at the time with um, a really great actor, uh, Harry Lennox. And then Ben came to Chicago to shoot a movie called Next of Kin with Liam Neeson. And um, he just didn't have much to do for like three months. So he um, got some guy to give him money to shoot a short film, which he was doing at the time, shooting shorts. Mm -hmm. And then the guy said, here's some more money. He's a gangster, by the way, this guy. Okay. Uh, a Chicago gangster guy. And he said, here's some more money, make it into a half hour and we'll, and we'll sell it to Rhino Video. And he said, oh, sure. And then he asked me, you know, we were sort of hanging out. He said, do you want to expand this little movie into a half hour and cast everybody you know who will do it for free and we'll make it and it'll be, a, you know, for Rhino Video. I don't even know anything else what Rhino Video is anymore, but it's just like specialized thing. And it was like a half hour comedy. We shot it on 35 millimeter and cut it together like this with the thing and taped it together with an editor. That's how long ago this is. But everybody's in this movie. Mike Myers is in the movie. Jeremy Piven's in the movie. John Cusack's in the movie. Um, uh, 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 Joel Murray is in the movie. De uh, Dave Pasquese is in the movie. Uh, uh, Andy Dick is in the movie. That's how Ben met Andy Dick. So, Because they were all my friends. Um, we had such a, you know, a pretty positive time making this film together and a lot of laughs. And he said, move to New York and we'll do stand up together. And I go, well, I have no money. I have no agent. And um, so he said, live with me. So mm. I did. Talk about a turn on the tables there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to yeah. go from not wanting to be a roommate to being a housemate. To be a roommate. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What was that? What was what was the that was short called that you guys did? The short film, it's called Elvis Stories. Elvis uh, Stories. I'm, I'm, it's, it's pretty funny. It, it might hold up. It's about people who have paranormal Elvis experiences. Nice. <laughs> and it's completely farcical and silly. It's shot in vignettes. And each vignette is a different person who has these odd uh, Elvis uh, paranormal experiences. Um, so I, I don't know if you can still get that movie, but it was, uh, it was really fun to make and it's pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, with that many, and with I, all those people. I, right? Yeah. And they were all, I mean, we're all like young and in our twenties. Uh, uh, John's brother, Billy is in the movie. He's very funny in it. Um, in this thing with, um, in this vignette with, uh, Andy Dick. And that's how, that's how Ben met Andy. Cause I worked with Andy at a deli, uh, above the, uh, at the top of the water tower in Chicago and we were both fired <laughs> from that. Um, yeah. I, I was fired because I was the worst waiter of all time. And Andy was fired for giving out free food to his friends. Nice. Yeah. That's an admirable. That's an admirable. That's admirable. Yeah. Yeah. For. yeah. How, and so how that's, how, that's how that started. And from doing stand up with Ben, like doing like a team, um, we developed characters, um, things that he had been working on, things that I'd been working on and we sort of combined them and that's how we started to do, you know, you two, he did Bono and I did the edge or I did, um, he did Eddie Munster and I, you know, played like a straight man or we did uh, a thing called rap mitzvah, which is, a, was a rap to, uh, was two bar mitzvah boys rapping in their bar mitzvahs, which was, I guess, cutting edge in the uh, latest of eighties, earliest of nineties. Um, and from, from that, um, MTV gave, wanted to work with us, gave us a little bit of money to make uh, what they called It's Your Hour, because they were branching. MTV at the time was all videos. I know it's hard to believe, but it was all music videos. And they wanted to branch into scripted TV, uh, particularly comedy. So they gave a few people very little money to go and shoot, guerrilla shoot, you know, like on their own um, little comedy sketches or vignettes that, and then edit it and give it to them and they would air it with videos in between. And so they liked it, what we did. We did, we did a rap mitzvah, rap mitzvah video. We did a few other things that were funny and um, 
they said, well, why don't you guys do a, a Ben and Jeff show? And I was like, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a show with my name in it. And then I was, and I was working at remote control at the time. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Does anybody remember remote control? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was, that was my first real like paying job and I was working in remote control and I get a call from my manager who is none other than Lori Leonard, who becomes Lori David, Larry David's wife. Wow. Okay. Oh. Another story. I know everybody who's made it very, very big. You are the yeah, conjunction yeah. to our entertainment. Right. So there's me, nowhere. And then there's all these amazing people who've come from this connection, like Bob Odenkirk and Andy Dick and, and Laurie Leonard and, and Ben and just, just everybody, who, you know, uh, Dave Cross. Like anybody who's like been around me has done really well. So that's what I tell my students now. Stick with me for a little while. You're going to be great. Now question, does this bode well for our show now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The more you okay, have, right. the more you have me on, the less I will become, and the better and more famous you will be. But you have to have me on for a certain amount of time to pay your Jeff Con dues. Thank you. Show business. <laughs> and once you've depleted me of all of my everything I can give to you, and I have nothing to show for it, that's when you guys make it. Yeah, right. Showtime is going to call us any day saying, we want the, we want the yeah, Dirt we want and the Royal show. and Jeff show, show, but it's only going to be the Dirt and Royal show. <laughs> right. We don't want Jeff Kahn. <laughs> so I'm like working. I get a call from Lori Leonard who says, hold on to your hats. MTV wants to do the Ben and Jeff show. And I'm like, this is like, it, this is like, to me, it was the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. I just thought like all of the 10 years or whatever, almost decade that I had spent trying to get to this moment was all worth it. And I could barely digest it when the phone rang again. And it was one of the MTV executives who said, Hey, um, I know you've heard the good news. I just want you to know that it's not going to be the Ben and Jeff show. It's just going to be the Ben Stiller show, but you're welcome to be on it. So <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, well, that's, that's more befitting of, of what my reality is. So um, it became the Ben Stiller show, but I, I, it was just Ben and I, and this other very funny, very good actor, Harry O'Reilly. Um, and it was just us doing a show within a show, which I always loved. Uh, we were putting on a Ben Stiller show for MTV, who had made us play videos in the middle of our show. And we got to do all these different sketches and all these different worlds and basically do anything we wanted to do. So it was artistically, it was really fun. And we did a show that parodied Fox shows at the time. I sent the tape to Joe DiBola, who used to be an MTV executive, who was now an ex executive at Fox. He saw the tape and he offered Ben a, a pilot. Well, he offered us a pilot deal to write a pilot for the Fox show. And that's how it sort of, um, uh, morphed from the MTV show into the to the Fox um, MTV show, uh, the Fox Ben Stiller show. The full circle of that is pretty pretty beautiful. How it goes from not wanting to share a room with you to not sharing not a title share with a you. Show with you. <laughs> yeah. Still being you now, all the way. So, being you, all the way. Was that? Did, do you know what? Why that decision was made? Did, did, was there any light shed on that? You know, look, it's made because. In, in show business, you know, there's certain realities and it's not that the MTV executive was super nice, a very good friend of mine and um, very supportive of me, gave me a job writing a pilot for a talk show that I, you know, my first pilot and it gave me $500, but anyway, it was my first professional job, um, a lovely person, um, but they wanted to work with Ben, you know, and Ben didn't want to be Stella, Stiller and Mira, you know, he wanted to be, he wanted his own show. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't want to be a, a comedy team. I mean, he had grown up with a comedy team and, you know, and, and in, in that way, I can't blame him, right? right? I mean, I'm not there. They're not offering a show to Jeff Kahn, really. They're offering a show because they want Ben Stiller to be on their network. It yeah. so happens that he's working with me. So, you know, I had never done anything before, really, of, you know, of note other than 
you know, doing commercials or being in vice versa in a small scene, you know, and doing improv and being on, I mean, I worked hard and I, you know, I did a lot of work, but I, I didn't have a resume to speak of. That was, a was a, a large resume. So do you have a favorite skit from the Ben Stiller show? The, the, the Ben and Jeff show? Well, I, I guess I have favorites from both shows. It, when we were, we did like a 25 year reunion or something or a 20 year reunion. And they asked that question. And, and, and I think Judd, Judd, was, Judd, Judd was the monitor, Judd Apatow was, uh, and, and Ben was there and Andy. Bob Odenkirk was on a screen and I was there and Rob Cohn, a very, very great uh, sketch writer and writer in general, and now a really good director. And Janine, they asked us that question. And um, so from the show, from the, from the Fox show, I, you know, I, I always loved Manson Lassie so much because I just felt it was such a clear idea. It was so Odenkirkian is what I would mm -hmm. say. Like it was really cerebral, but, that it would, but in the execution, it was just so nailed. Like it was smart, but it was silly and it was funny and it, and it was shot in black and white. So it had sort of a patina of, of, of the old TV shows, you know, and the feeling of that. And it just, it just always, lo I just loved it. I just thought it was like, it was just such a gem. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a lot of them. You know, I mean, I certainly loved making the, the sketches that, that I was involved in, which tended to be kind of more musical. So they were really fun for me because I got to edit them and uh, put them together, cast them and, you know, do like U2 stuff or do the, you know. So Bob, uh, to pay, to play it forward, said that he loved the Grungies, which was, um, which was my sketch of a mashup between um, Seattle '90s grunge and the '60s monkeys show. Mm. Oh, it's I, so dated now that it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like it's so like so old. Uh, so I don't know if that stands the test of time, but um, it sure was fun to. It was sure fun to do. It was a little bit of my childhood, right in the that I could be nostalgic about writing, but also like right in the moment of you know when grunge music was all the rage. And in the original Ben Stiller show, there's a, there were so many fun little crazy things. I got to do a, a sketch where I was, was supposed to be my audition reel, where I got to take off all my clothes and do a monologue from Equus. Hmm. I always liked that one because I, because it, it fulfilled my lifelong dream of being nude in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, and that, doing, was... and doing an Equus monologue. <laughs> Was a was a sock in play for that? No, I just there was a there was a very a small chair. <laughs> that's, that's all I needed. <laughs> Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.